sorry, Ryan, for the delay. We're just back. No problem. Um, here we are. And I'm sending you the our counter proposal right now. All right, sending One it more to you. Esteban, can you yes. make um, Meredith a co-host, please? Yes. One All second. Right. My computer is a little bit slow. All right. Ryan, did you get it? Yes, just got it. And I'll share it through here. Can everyone see that? So um, thank you again for your proposal. We truly believe that we're definitely speaking the same language now, uh, and there is much interesting work to do. This is our counter proposal. Our counter proposal keeps the 3% raise, um, but changes the minimum from the 29,450 that the University of Georgia offers in a similar situation in terms of costs to the one that Gainesville is offering, uh, is, is having to 28,500 uh, and the corresponding stipend for the nine month uh, appointments. This is because um, currently if we even wanted like, here, here's, if we take the, the 2017 minimum from July 2017 to today, um, the, the necessary minimum to compensate for the inflation that has occurred would take us currently, and I can show you this, uh, to $25,000. Can you all see the CPI inflation calculator here? No, no. it's still on the stipends. Oh, sorry. sorry. I'll change to desktop. So even, even and, and now I guess you can see it, right? Yes, okay. So um, the current situation is that um, if we took the minimum established in 2017 to today, as of March, uh, we would have a $25,000 minimum, which is, um, 
which is what would be necessary just to compensate for inflation, just not to pay less than in 2017. At the same time, concurrently, we have a situation by which um, our, our income, according to, this is the MIT living wage calculator for Gainesville, Florida, uh, actually what we, what we need to make ends meet would be um, $30,000, but again, given the former concessions in our in our kind of proposals before and 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 the fact that you are uh, actually uh, offering us a much better proposal this time we thought we would go down to 28500 uh, and give you back that counter proposal having said that of course this is bargaining uh, and and we are very interested in hearing also your language uh, regarding the units. Um, the problem which we find in that case is that we've got information from the units themselves that told us that they have they have had because uh, because they just cannot cannot pay everyone current every every employee that they need currently, uh, even as they are paying right now. So we are very concerned that perhaps the unit don't even have the ability to um, have pay higher than the minimum the, than the current minimum, uh, even even if we if we ask them to through um, through our CBA. Uh, but again, we're we're eager to hear what you propose in terms of language, um, and and uh, I don't know if uh, anyone else wanted to comment. Um, or or if you had comments on your side. Um, no, I I think on the last point you made. Um, I agree that we might hear some people say that some departments say it's about affordability. I, I think what we're interested in knowing is why. Um, so um, I, it's still worth exploring and I'm happy to propose some language on that. Um, okay, no, other than that, I, I think your, your proposal's pretty self-explanatory. I'm trying to think back and compare it to your last proposal uh, which was all minimum stipend um, in, in lieu of a raise uh, and trying to consider whether this ends up costing more or less than that. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know that we want to do that sitting here and have you watch me do math. It's not pretty. Um, so let us, let us do that. We asked that someone be present from the financial department because you're, you can't do the math. Um, so I, why you... Even that person is not likely to be able to do the math here. It's, 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 it, it, but they it, would have a better idea, right? I mean, do you know um, anything about where, where the money's coming from and how much is left to actually give it to us? How much money is how left? How much money, yeah, or just in the budget? What is what is being allocated for us? Do you know? Well, we actually know already what 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 is being allocated to us. It's it's around 102 millions. That's something we can ourselves calculate. But yes, sure, uh, having the CFO or somebody else present can be very beneficial. In the past, we've had a great working relations. Yeah, that's what we said last time. We said that we wanted those people present today. And I'm asking Ryan why those people are not here today. They are not here today because they, this is a, there's a board meeting this week. Um, they are tied up with other things. Um, and you know, this is this is the university is making this proposal through its bargaining team, um, and even if they were here today, also um, they are not inclined to do sort of the type of math and confirm numbers or confirm costs in a way that would be practical on at a caucus or at a bargaining session. It just wouldn't happen. Dr. Kawahara, you were raising your hand for a long time. 
I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Hi, no, no worries. Uh, I just wanted to, so I'm a, a professor here in, in um, the museum department um, and also affiliated with the biology department and other departments at UF. Um, I just kind of wanted to say a couple of things because I think it's important uh, for people to understand what, what this really is really about. It's really about the graduate students and their, their lives, right? I mean, many students are being paid under $20,000 and the cost of living as what was just showed earlier is, you know, what we need, to, what they need to be living is, is at least 30,000 or something close to that number. And, you know, even if you agree to 24, or 25 or whatever it's going to be or what, whatever it might be, um, that's that's like, you know, close to $10,000 less than what one really needs to, to, to like live here, not, not just to survive. We're talking about survival level stuff. And I think that's really unfair to graduate students. These are the students that are making this university happen. You know, I have graduate students in my lab my lab wouldn't happen if it weren't for the grad students, but some of them have to do things like DoorDash. I mean, this is craziness. I, I cannot understand why the university cannot make this slight adjustment so that they can live happily and uh, the science and all the research, all the departments that, that the students are in can, can uh, live at a level in which they can do the work that, that they need to do. And we need the grad students in order to make our, uh, research and, and, and work happen. So I really hope that this can be, um, uh, you know, something can be done about this. It's a really big problem and, and I'm, I'm personally not happy about it. And I'm willing to protest more about this because this is simply not okay when you look across all the universities um, in, in the United States. And, you know, UF is one of the lowest uh, paying uh, universities in Florida. And that's, that's really, uh, really not, not great, especially at such a big university. So that, that's, that's all I have to say, thanks. Thank you. Um, curious, the other, but we wanted to share this with you, Ryan, uh, regarding the costs. Uh, we've calculated the cost of the, the proposal we sent last time. This, okay. is, this one has a minimum that is $1,000 less approximately. So just for you to, figure, to, to see it, like we, we calculated it regardless of the FTE and the hourly pay, uh, can you all see that, right? Like I'm not talking in the air, right? No, I see it. I see the, the okay. Yeah, sorry, Esteban, <laughs> I forgot my camera was off and I was nodding and giving you a thumbs up, sorry. <laughs> so like what, I, what, what, we, what we do is usually take a, everyone's annual rate and in, make it independent of FTE and, and the appointment, take it to, the new minimum and uh, then uh, readjust it for their corresponding FTE and, and uh, type of appointment. What we get is a cost of $10 million approximately. Uh, for example, th th this, is, this is the former proposal. We can for sure get you back uh, cost calculations of our current proposal for the next time, uh, it wouldn't take necessarily mean much time, but at least 15 minutes. Um, what we have is that $10 million is approximately 0.43% of the employee compensation and benefits expenditure as of the last, uh, the, the fresh uh, financial report. That's, you are spending 2.5 billion in employee compensation and, and benefits. Uh, and uh, the, definitely the, the, um, the impact would be tremendous. I mean, we're talking about our formal proposal was a proposal that affected 63% of all appointments uh, and uh, the rate effects were considerable. You look at the mean of the rate. You, your volume dropped a lot, Esteban. I don't know if you bumped Sorry? your mic. Your volume dropped quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, it did. Oh, a lot Sorry. Of I don't know uh, what happened. Where did I leave it? Where Where did you hear what? what well, we can still hear you, just very quiet now. I, I don't know if you pumped your mic. It's kind of like there. Were... Interesting. There you what go. About now? It's, yep. No, it's all about talking directly to the camera. Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> so the cost again, the cost is ten million dollars, uh, equivalent to zero point forty three percent of the total compensation and benefits as per the last um, financial report you're spending 2.5 billion. Um, and the, the effects of 
of our former proposal were very considerable. We are talking about something that affects 63% of all appointments, a mean increase through those appointments of close to $4,000. Uh, and these are just the percentiles, just for you to see that um, actually more than 2,000 appointments would still receive an increase of uh, $3,500. But again, we can we we can always get back to you with the cost of the current proposal. Well, we're, we're, yeah, and that, that'd be great. But we'll do it too. We'll do it as well. Um, um, I'm sure. I'm sure, like you guys, you know, even if we were to propose a proposal and tell you what we sort of calculated the cost, you'd want to make sure you did the math as well and make sure you're on the same page. So we'll do that. Um, um, the other, but, but, it, but it is always good to know whether we we agree on what things are going to cost. Yes, absolutely. Um, and uh, what the other thing we can get back to you is an analysis of which units in particular uh, are we talking about when uh, introducing language to uh, get units to, so to speak, uh, incent be being incentivized to pay more than the minimum. That would be great. Actually, that would uh, be very helpful. I do want to be cognizant of the time, but uh, Miriam? Uh, has had her hand up for a while. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. <laughs> Hi, yes. Yeah, it's Maria. Uh, what did you ask me? I'm sorry? I, I'm sorry, what did you ask me? I just... Uh... You have your hand raised up. We thought you wanted to say something. Yes, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, I attended the meeting very late and I don't know if it's relevant or not, but just wanted to share my experience this uh, as an international graduate student, as I mentioned uh, in the chat, uh, because of political matters, which here is not the place to talk about that, I am from even receiving help from my family uh, I cannot they cannot send me any money and I'm really experiencing a very stressful and hard time because I have to spend a lot of time on researching the next semester will be my last year I have to graduate and I have to, as a I have to because I'm a nine month um, appointee I have to pay for two, four credits by my own, which costs about, I don't know, a lot. And I'm getting more and more penalties. I have to pay rent. I have to pay for the um, student fees. And I have nothing to pay and I cannot work. I have tried. I have talked to people to just to work and do everything that I can. And in, in the exchange, I receive money in cash because you know that I am not uh, allowed to work. I'm doing my best to just keep up with that. And because I'm in a, a very bad time, I cannot, I mean, I have to be focused on my research. And none of the professors are understanding because, because no U.S. student, I mean, U.S. citizen, student, they don't understand the situation. So why would my professor understand? And I really don't know what to do. <laughs> I mean, and every, I mean, everything, uh, all the expenses, from grocery shop, everything got, has been gotten double or more. Uh, I, can, I can see it from all my transactions, all my uh, shopping that I, I remember I was doing since even 2019. And I'm not talking even about the grocery shop, which is important. I'm really talking about how can I save money to just pay the student expenses. I mean, I can't, I don't even have the opportunity. It's like that the university wants me to pay 
I don't have it and I am not able to register for the next semester. There is, I feel, I'm sorry, I feel unfortunately no support from my school. I don't know who to ask to waive my courses. I mean, for those courses, I know I have been uh, signed a contract which had been mentioned, but our contract, the COVID time wasn't mentioned <laughs> and the, uh, all the bad happenings after that wasn't mentioned. And the, uh, the sad thing here is that I feel no support completely being alone and it is very suffering. This is the most affecting thing that I feel no support from my professors and everyone else. Whoever that I contact, I only get very formal answers. And yes, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um... Ryan, in the interest of time, do you have a counter proposal for right now? Unfortunately, I do not. No, it's it's understandable. Um, and there is much numbers to go through. Um, we received uh, some, given that people have spoken, I just wanted to mention, we received emails from people that wanted to speak. If someone is still there uh, and, I don't know if we can have five more minutes. Uh, just please raise your hand. All right. Um, we have uh, L. Tillman. Hi, everyone. I apologize. The computer that I'm using doesn't have a camera, but I would like to really thank everyone for joining and being with us here and for all the work that's coming from both sides of these discussions. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Rec recently, a survey went out about housing and potentially building new apartments for graduate students. There was no single occupant apartment listed that would not consume at least 70% or more of the graduate student stipends in most apartments. Showing that UF is aware of the lack of available housing and their cost not to mention the inflation on rent since the pandemic began, but it is placing the responsibility on the students to figure it out instead of working with them. This inability to afford housing is even worse for students at extinction sites, many of them taking out loans to afford being able to live while also not having access to the student health center, gyms, buses, or other UF student services. Grad students are working side jobs, further worrying themselves into the ground during the semester, along with TAing, taking classes, and research. And I myself found this so important to attend that I'm actually missing class right now. How do we achieve the work-life balance that we are told to strive for in the weekly well-being emails that we receive? Students who do have any savings as a safety net for the lack of vision and dental coverage or other troubles that could arise are dipping into them for day-to-day -day items because stipends barely cover the necessities. The program is heavily set up to favor traditional students moving from undergrad directly to grad in an age range that makes their parents' insurance accessible to them. And not acting on the facts of the graduate student financial situation, UF is privileging certain students and creating an environment that makes the term non-traditional student a punishment. If UF wants to show true pride and commitment to being number one, then they should aim at leading not just in sports and research, but also in treatment of the students that help get them there. What will happen when students start to decide the schools that they will attend based on the financial support that's offered to them or determine the attractiveness of a program based on the financial situation that they'll find themselves in when they arrive? How steadfast is the number one position then? If UF wants to maintain being number one, they need to put student treatment as a new priority because showing off the food pantry as a nutrition supplement during your grad student appreciation week says everything that is known about the issue and how much of it is given by care to the school. What other options have UF investigated to remedy the situations? Sometimes the institution's lessons are the student's trauma and the source of issues and UF needs to make space to take accountability for that. We love our school and we want it and ourselves to thrive together because surviving does not say number one and just surviving isn't going to maintain being number one. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda. 
Hi, everybody. My name is Amanda. I'm currently a graduate student in the School of Natural Resources and Environment. Um, and I just wanted to speak a little bit about my own experience as a grad student at this event. Um, so over the past three years, I've had the experience at UF as an administrative staff member and now have transitioned into a graduate student. I feel advantage to know how the fiscal workings and fiscal operations work in academia from my experience in administrative staff, but now that I've transitioned into being a grad student, I'm absolutely mortified at how little regard is shown for graduate students who keep this institution afloat. Paying graduate students and staff a living wage is the center of diversity, equity, and inclusion. We cannot pick and choose to support equity and inclusion only when it's convenient to us. I've heard so many empty promises from the administration regarding DEI initiatives, and this work often falls on the shoulders of those who have affected by it most. No amount of training is gonna help us pay our rent, which has increased substantially each year that I've moved here. Within my lab alone, our rents have increased between $200 and $400 respectively during the pandemic and with no increase in income or support from our jobs at the university. It's unethical to keep recruiting students, particularly students from marginalized and underserved backgrounds, knowing that we're going to be financially burdened to come here, knowing that we're going to have to work additional jobs to supplement the cost of living here, knowing that we only have to worry about securing our basic needs before we can even think about doing sound science. When I first started here in 2019 as a lab manager, I was elated because for the first time in my entire life, I only had to work one job. But now that I've transitioned into wanting to further my education, I'm working two jobs again at the expense of my security and well-being. I'm mentoring graduate students. I'm writing my thesis. I'm conducting my research. I'm helping keep my lab afloat, all while worrying whether or not I'm going to miss a bill or have enough to go grocery shopping without going further into debt. And I know that I'm not alone in this and that folks have it even worse than I do. The last thing I'll say is that my entire household qualifies for food stamps and we all work for the number one employer of Gainesville, the University of Florida. How can we be proud to work for a university that doesn't support its most basic needs and in the most basic way possible? Pay graduate students a living wage, pay our staff a living wage. It's embarrassing that we have to sit up here and beg for it when universities all across the country have done so much more for their students for so much less. This is not normal. It's not the graduate student's responsibility to secure funding for departments to pay us. It's yours. And frankly, UF needs to do better. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, how are we doing on time? Uh, Meredith, you were, were about, sorry, yeah. I'm, no, there was an accident. Oh, okay. I'm okay. I, uh, yeah. I, don't know the, I don't know about the rest of my team, but I, I'm okay. Thank you for the patience uh, and for your time. Um, um, we got, uh, Sorry, I, I, I don't uh, see your name exactly. It's GSM. Yeah, sorry. I kind of threw my initials there. It's um, okay. I want to say thank you, everyone, for coming and talking and being a part of this. Um, I just, like others, wanted to share what I've been going through. Um, this is my first semester being a grad student. And being an adult, I was really excited to get an apartment and like I'm rooming with a friend, but now that we're actually paying for things is whenever I realized, wow, we really can't afford this. And it it's rough because our, just to give numbers, our rent alone is 1600. And pretty much because the way we get paid with biweekly, it eats my entire paycheck when rent comes around. And then I find myself struggling for groceries. And it's like, before I had moved into this apartment, I had the option to live at home, but it's like, I wanted to get out on my own and start building credit, start just being doing the adult things. I thought it was okay. But now I'm realizing I can't, one, I can't do it alone. And two, even if I wanted a home of my own, I like um, someone said in the chat, I, I can't do this without a roommate. And then it's like, I find myself struggling. But luckily we both are paid bi-weekly on offset weeks. So it's like, if I am struggling for groceries, she's able to help out vice versa. But it's just, I feel like I shouldn't have to be struggling for groceries. And I thought at first that I was like, kind of, I didn't fully understand this. And it's like, I talked to my family and they're like, yeah, no, UF, they do so much research. They're so successful, but this, the lack of stipend for you guys to even like be able to think, can I do groceries? It's just, it's kind of crazy. Thank you. Um, Chelsea? Hello, can you all hear me? Yes. 
Uh, so I think the administration needs to address the public safety issues resulting from low salary. The low salary graduate student workers are paid has become a public health safety crisis. I've spoken to graduate students at UF who are cutting back on life-sustaining medications like insulin so they can afford rent, cutting or stopping their mental health medications, and constantly at risk at lo to lose their apartments and live in their cars. With this, the low salary becomes much more than a matter of respect and value. It becomes a severe safety issue for the students at UF. Accidental deaths and coma is a common result of cutting back on insulin to save money and has been reported on widely over the last few years. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I think we can uh, gather again at our caucus. Uh, Ryan, Brooke, Dr. Duncan, thank you very much for your time. Um, I believe we are starting to talk definitely in, in, in. Nope, we lost if... again, it's the wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. You're back, you're back, you're back. I'm back. Okay. Like, I really need something to focus my voice to the camera. Right. Um, what I was saying is that thanks for your time. Uh, I think we are, we can uh, reconvene our, at our caucus. Um, and uh, I think that we are definitely talking in terms that are far more productive, far more conducive to an agreement. Uh, I don't see it that far away. Um, and we are very eager to, to hear your counter proposal. In the meantime, as I said, we'll go through the particular units that um, we would like to incentivize to pay a bit more, um, a bit more uh, than the minimum. And if necessary, I think that um, to address that, there, 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 is some, there is some concern within our unit that, um, the, the 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 idea of talking to those to those particular departments uh, might um, take us away from a more productive discussion on the minimum. What I think, and and there is always the concern that those departments, uh, what those departments have expressed in the past, that they may not be able to afford this. But what we can do always, I think, is uh, invite them over. Uh, that's that's definitely an option given that they might be part of of the of the of the overall discussion um but yeah okay. um, do we have a session scheduled yet for next time no, no but okay. if you would like to i don't know i don't know if you would like to do that now I think it's tough to do it now but i want to get something on the books for next week so i think i'll reach out to you guys immediately after we're closed here to make sure we get something for next week that sounds ideal. Okay. Thank you so very much. Can we, can we expect someone from the financial team to be present next time? Is that a promise you can make? I, I, I can't make that promise because I, I don't know. And I, I don't know. I think it sounds like you're asking sort of two questions. One of which is why can't someone be here to do the calculations on the various costs of proposals? I'm not saying that they need to do the calculations on the spot, but they will be much more knowledgeable than you are in these matters. And I think we would get answers that would be much more meaningful for us. Well, it sounds like that your second question is why can't the university or either is it willing or unable to offer more? Um, that So those are two different answers. I can have somebody join us um, to help do calculations. Um, the, the other part is, I don't, I don't think the university is saying it's, it's not getting into affording or anything like that. It's, it's trying to sort of balance a number of different issues here. Um, so I mean, for, from that perspective, the university has designated us as the bargaining team. Um, but as far as somebody to be helpful from the staff who can do calculations, certainly we can have someone join for that. So that's a guarantee that we will see them next time? Not a guarantee, it's I'll do my best. I, I don't know what people's schedules That doesn't mean are. anything, that doesn't mean anything, but okay. I just, I don't know what their schedules are. Okay, well, we can find a time when they're free, I'm sure. I mean, we have 66 people with very busy schedules here. I'm sure we can find that a time that works for them. We'll do our best. Ryan, what we can do, uh, just uh, follow up with us, uh, and and again, if if we need to wait a couple more days to have someone, uh, that's definitely possible. Don't worry. Okay. Thanks. All right.
everyone will see you at the caucus room. Thank you so much for coming.